Yeah. yeah. Sorry about all the guitars. That's that's all right. It's a bit crowded in here, isn't it? It's what exactly what a dungeon needs. <sighs> what a bunch of guitars. Yep. And a bunch of baby seats. Oh, is that what they were? I thought they were some sort of torture device. No, they're baby seats. No, oh, that's... okay. I was going to say they look quite comfortable for our torture devices. We suddenly went, oh, we've got too much of this stuff and it can't live in the basement because we're clearing it out for some reason. And then we just <laughs> ended Moved up it with it all in here. <laughs> Yay. Amazing. And then, yeah, well, actually, I took a couple of my guitars out the loft because uh, uh, I realised that actually it's quite warm. Yeah, not a good and, place for guitars. Well, I'll tell you, a worse place for a guitar is your car. Yeah. My bestest, most expensive guitar. I did a gig on a day when I don't, I don't usually do gigs on Sunday evenings. Right. And uh, just completely forgot and, and left my guitar Ooh. in the car for like days. Literally Heavy. days. In this and weather, that's going to bend and walk. Oh, it did quite badly. Well, I say quite badly, actually. Thankfully, the truss rod just needed a bit of tightening up. Sorted. Cost me 15 quid to, so, to sort out the, uh, the problem. But I was pooing myself for a minute there. <laughs> Adam's laughing because I just edited out myself swearing. <laughs> we don't. Want, we haven't got Ross here, so yeah, we'll, we'll see how long we can get well through the show clean. without swearing. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Anywho, yes. Why do I have guitars? Because I'm a bit of a musician oh. in, sometimes and stuff. So we, I thought perhaps we should do a, some some advertising up top because somebody mentioned that uh, they don't listen to the last like few minutes of our podcast when, how we, dare when, they? when we say how dare oh, they? we're gonna wrap it up off they go don't go that we're not wrapping it up no. yeah so uh yeah my music page ladies and gents please go and check it out find me on on youtube chris quinton uh and there's a little black and white picture of me uh or you can find it actually by by going to my website uh chris q things.co.uk all Ooh. one word thank you very much go and have a look at that some of our podcasts and things are on there as well and links to some of my favourite audiobooks and stuff. Yeah, nice. go and have a look. And Adam, what yeah. do you do? Ah, uh, well, I do all sorts of things. Most of it you can find at Adam Gatchel Arts on Facebook and YouTube. Website comes soon. Uh, but yeah, do comedy, poetry, art, all sorts of things. I will have some new artwork coming soon uh, that I'll be putting up on my Facebook page. And if I can get my likes to a certain number, it's a magical mystery number, but whoever convinces someone to be the one that clicks the like button for that number or get a prize so, uh yeah. <laughs> okay it's a very who knows when it happened but it could happen it could be you ladies yeah, and gentlemen exactly. anyway uh haven't you got a thing this week I, I have reading yeah between uh, the lines uh reading between the lines which is uh the poetry collective i'm in they are doing a show at strings on the isle of white you put um, on the isle of white ladies and gents if you're around I'll be taking my Cow Speak Comedy Show from Cows there for a good old half an hour to 45 minutes takeover. And giving our podcast a plug. So if you're in America yeah. and you'd like to come all the way over to the Isle of Wight just to hear Adam do a half hour show and plug our podcast. And we mean the British Isle of Wight, not the one in America that's landlocked. There's another one somewhere else in the world as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's three. It would be worth your ticket price. Yeah, it would. But you can do a bit of Adam's thing and come and see me playing Cows at the same time. Yeah. Well, not at the same time, but, you know, on the same night. Yeah. Two for one. Two for one. Thursdays, eh? <laughs> it's like it's the new Friday. <laughs> yeah. God. Should we do a podcast? Definitely. This era podcast, ladies and gentlemen, is a snooze button podcast, bringing you the week's TV, movie, pop culture news. If you'd like to listen to a, re a review show, we do one of those as well every week. Go and check out our back catalogue and you can get our podcasts in all the usual places. Anywhere where you usually get your podcasts from. Yeah. Nice one. Right. Let's do it. It's like the Muppets. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what I was going for. <laughs> hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Snooze Button with Mr. Adam Gatchel. Uh, uh, hello. And me, Mr. Chris Quinton. Hello. Bubble. It's alive. Oh. Computer's alive. Okay. Amazing. We had a, uh, a listener response to our show last week, our Snooze Button show last week. Oh, did we? All the way from America. Oh. America. What did he say? She say? He was he. Yeah, and he wasn't very happy about our uh, our reportage of the Atari VCS system that's coming well, out very that soon. You guys didn't like it. That we, it's, yeah, just that we didn't really see the uh, the point in its existence. It's not it's not that I don't like the idea of it. I love the idea of an Atari machine, 
However, yeah, but what what is there for it that's like legendarily remembered? This is my issue with it. Well, Atari games in general, Asteroids, yeah, but, yeah. Um, Missile Command, uh, but all of those you can ET. get as emulate emulators on. Yeah, you can run them on an emulator you know, device. You could yeah, make yeah. one yourself with a, a like a couple of lines on a wall using like shadows and stuff. You can play. Like those sorts of games with yeah. special light up, a couple of sticks now. and a ping pong ball. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> very true. <clears throat> but you know, it looks quite funky, and it yeah, will sit yeah. next to your TV and, it, uh, TV, and it'll look nice. And it's got a wooden panel on the front. Yeah. So anyway, I just I, I think that my problem is I'm, I feel the same about all of those things, whether it's the Nintendo one or the Sega one or whatever. I just, you know, I don't see the point. They've they've done collections of most of those games for... There's an Atari collection, a Sega Mega Drive collection for uh, PlayStation, Xbox and PC. And then Nintendo does its own old school games on their modern consoles as downloads. So I, I just don't kind of see the point in any of that stuff. Do you know what I mean? Fair enough. I think it's a, it's a bit redundant. Anyway, look, this chap's name is Seanwell Rivers. If you are listening again, Seanwell... Thanks very much for the comment, either way. We're always up for comments, even if you're disagreeing or agreeing. It doesn't matter. Right? Yeah, exactly. Every, everyone's got the, uh, a different way of looking at it, haven't they? What, is he, what, did, he, what did he actually say? He says, uh, he's not. you may not care about Atari, but I care about Atari because I love Atari because I'm a fan. And, Fair enough. Uh, I replied and just basically said, yeah, it's not that we don't love Atari. It's just uh, that we kind of can't really see where it fits in. Yeah. And he's like, I don't agree. I think it will do well. But that's that's fine. Yeah. May, maybe in America, it'll do a lot better than it would over here, maybe. Because Atari's, you say that? Uh, Atari's are talked about a lot more in... The name pops up, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, definitely. It does, all over the place. But there you go. Maybe, you know, Blade Runner. That's, that's mm-hmm. a great example. You know, people went, ooh, an Atari symbol when it popped up. Yeah. I certainly did. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's just one of those logos. I know what it is, but like for me, yeah, again, the mini... Nintendo and the Mini Sega, I, I just I don't doesn't really do anything for me. The logo itself just screams my childhood at yeah, me. Like, yeah. Ah, it's, uh, sorry, made the first system I ever owned, for instance. Yeah, yeah. And I kind of wish that this was a better thing, but we'll see. I'm quite happy to be proven wrong. Yeah, yeah, maybe amazing, Mr. Rivers. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for sending a comment. It's greatly appreciated. Hopefully, we've got you on board, and you're not just you know <laughs> giving us a dislike and buggering off. <laughs> Thanks for the dislike, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, cheers. Right. Moving on. The box office, Adam. Go on then. Do you want to know what it is? <laughs> you, actually, I'm pretty sure you can guess what's at number one. I honestly haven't got a clue what's at the cinema. What at the was moment. released in the USA this week? No idea. Oh, mate, Ant Man and the Wasp. Oh, oh, yeah, because they're Yay. getting it like a month and a bit before us. Aren't is they? it a whole month? Yeah, we're getting it beginning of August. Oh, screw that. that month and a bit before it's ridiculously like with comic book films it shouldn't be that's that far terrible I, no. i'm even, even asia are getting it like the end of this week right or beginning of next week man they're gonna lose so many ticket sales in piracy yeah like it's cinema they should just put it out across the world at the same time i don't understand why there's this whole delay it and put it out first excuse me put it out first here put it out first second there it's cinemas. Just put it out at the same time everywhere. It doesn't matter. <laughs> there you go. Oh, well, it's not like there's not... Any, was that you knocking? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay. I thought it was the door for a second. It's not like there's nothing else to see at the cinema, actually, thinking about it. Because it's, it's an awesome summer for cinema. Is it What's it is. What's on at the moment? Oh, Incredibles 2, Jurassic... Oh, we'll, we'll just do the top ten. Yeah. Uh, Jurassic... Incredibles 2, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, The First Purge, Sicario Day of Sodado, Uncle Drew... Oceans 8, Tag, Won't You Be My Neighbour, and Deadpool 2. Oh. It's a good top ten. And it's going to stay like this for a while. Did you find out what Uncle Drew is? No. Did um, you? It's a load of old school basketball players playing uh, like, make the trailer, up yeah. like a elderly men. Yeah, yeah, we reported on the trailer yeah, a while back. It's very yeah. fun. I haven't seen it, but I've seen the trailer and it looks very fun. Yeah. I like the look of it. Yeah. Anyway, look, Ant-Man and the Wasp. Yes. Has only just... Only just beaten the uh, the take of some Phase One titles, so it's not done extremely well in its opening opening weekend. No, but then it's going against things like, but it's yeah, Incredibles it's, Two, it's a strong, Deadpool Two, strong competition yeah, at the moment. Yeah, I think they knew that was going to happen, but they just went with it anyway because obviously they own Jurassic World and they own Incredibles Two and they own 
um, Ant Man and Wasp Disney. So, did Disney own Jurassic World? Is yeah, I think the Jurassic Park's all owned by Disney now, isn't it? Or is have it? I got that wrong? I don't know if it is. Should oh. we have a look quick? Maybe I'm thinking of something else. You have a look. I'm going to drink some coffee. Oh, my God, that's strong coffee. Ugh. Right. I've only got a pint of it to get through. <laughs> Before Adam finishes looking up this thing on his phone. Here we go. Oh, jeez. Oh, so strong. No, I take that back. It's still it's still with uh, Uni- Universal and Amblin. Yeah. For some reason, I thought it had moved over to Disney. So yeah, but they're still yeah they own Incredibles too. They you know they knew what was coming out around the same time. So I think they knew it wasn't going to do as well as the other Marvel films. But they've gone. We'll see how it does against some of this. So in other news, I'm buzzing on caffeine. Right. Um, <laughs> the budget for Ant-Man of the Wasp we don't actually know what it is yet but you can kind of work it out and there are some rumors kicking around so we know that the movie has got the lowest production budget of any of the three 2018 releases uh, from Marvel but it's still going to cost more than its 2015 predecessor so we know that already the original Ant-Man had a budget of something like 130 million and it took 519 so right pretty damn successful yeah, really yeah so it's rumoured that the budget for this one is something like 160 million plus expenses, and its break-even point is probably somewhere between 320 and 340 million. Cool. It took 76 this weekend. Yeah. So it'll be all right. Yeah, it'll be it'll fine. Get there. It'll easily, it'll easily be at the cinema for a few weeks and make that money. And it's got the world to cover. Yeah, like yeah, you say, like it's, it's got, only America at the moment. We've got as months well. of this thing being yeah. kicking around, earning money. So because yeah. I'll go and see it at the cinema when it get, when it hits here. So, you know... when What's the date it arrives? I think it's 3rd of August, so I'll see it oh. halfway through the week after. August is such a hectic month for me. Hopefully, fingers crossed, I'll get to the cinema for it, but we'll see. See what happens. More comic book news, Adam. Yes. Brie Larson has confirmed that Captain Marvel has wrapped filming. Awesome. Which is cool. So that's going to be out on the 6th of March next year. Amazing. Do you want some more news about that movie? Go on. So Samuel Jackson and Clark Gregg... Yeah. Obviously, the film's set in the past. Yes, in the 90s. Yep, so they're going to be de-aged for the entire movie. Oh. Oh. Interesting. <laughs> I think, what do you think about their de-aging technology? Um, well, it's probably better than it was with the first Captain America, which at the time when it when they did that was pretty amazing. And It now, did look pretty convincing. Yeah. In actual fact, one of Ross's friends, I don't know if this has been mentioned recently on the podcast, but I remember him saying about it, um, one of... Ross's mates actually thought that that Chris Evans had uh, bulked up for the part. Yeah. <laughs> and that he looked like a little skinny weasel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think, to be honest, like you go back and watch Captain America, the first Avenger, and it's not awful still. Like, it no, it's true. It doesn't look awful. It looks... It doesn't look right, but it it doesn't look awful. So I, I'm quite interested. They, they'd they probably be able to do it much better now than they could back then. As a movie, I actually disliked Captain America, the first Avenger, when I first saw it. Did and, you? And I prefer it now. Oh, no, like okay. the, I guess it's kind of almost nostalgic in some way, because it's 20 movies ago, you know. Going back and watching it now, when you've had all the other stuff happen... You it get gives it more whole, meaning. Yeah, it gives you a whole different idea and meaning to what the film's about, yeah. which I think is great. You know, the fact that they've done it well enough in the later stuff to nod back to it in that way is, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Gives you a new appreciation for the movie. I like that. Speaking of movies you'll have a new appreciation for, Go I'm on. sure, Adam, Go on. Uh, Avengers Infinity War. Yeah. There's going to be an extended cut. Ooh. 30 minutes of extra Thanos. Yeah, I'm up for that. Do you know what? I'd be up for 30 minutes extra of anything as long as it's it's done in the same tone and style and was only cut because they had to make it a certain length. Yeah, yeah. I quite happily watch a three-hour version of that movie. I prefer it. I mean, it's quite choppy. You know, the, uh, yeah. It's well edited, don't get me wrong. I've seen far worse movies that jump about all over the place. <laughs> so and like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, but what was, the, what was my point? Oh, yeah. So it, it could... In honesty, just some scenes could breathe a little bit more. Yeah, you know if there's I mean? a little bit more of Thanos doing stuff and moving around and saying things, maybe that 30 minutes actually just makes 
it a little less choppy. I think with like letting a scene breathe, I just mean allowing a character to actually walk off, like exit yeah. the the frame before yeah, you yeah. cut. You know, because yeah. they didn't really have the opportunity to do that. They no, had to they cut had away. To fit it all in. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So yes, that's good. Um, apparently, Josh Brolin wasn't actually happy with his. Uh, his cable performance. No, I saw that, yeah. We, we did mention this on the podcast already, but yeah, he was just uh, wrapped up in doing two parts, basically. Yeah. Two huge comic book parts. Yeah. And quite a lot of pressure, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, like, if you get it wrong, <laughs> fans hate yeah. you, don't they, nowadays? He's a very good actor, though. Oh, he's so I, I've got a lot of time for him. He's the best pre- thing about Men in Black 3. Is it him that's in Predestination? No. That's the other guy, guy that looks a bit like him, isn't it? Yeah, Guy Pearce. No, Pierce. no, it's not Guy Pearce. Is it not? No. Oh, no, it's... um. Oh, what's his name? Ethan... Oh, yeah, Ethan Hawke. Yeah. I get Guy Pearce and Ethan Hawke's names round the wrong way. Guy Hawke. Ethan Pearce. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, don't know when that's coming out. We'll let you know when we know. I'll, I'll it's be, probably not far off, is I'll it? I'll probably be buying it when it comes yeah. out. So, yeah, definitely. Blu-ray version for your 4K TV. Oh, I wish I had 4K. <laughs> Nicholas Cage, you like a bit of Nicholas Cage, don't you? I do. Cool. He's going to be voicing Spider-Man Noir in the Into the Spider-Verse. Do you movie. know what? That's genius. Yeah. Yeah. Hit Spider-Man Noir in the comics. Spider-Man Noir in the computer games, um, like Mirror Dimension or Shattered Dimensions game and stuff. The character's brilliant. And do you know what? If they're going to do an animated version, I'm well up for him doing it in the movie. Like the TV uh, series character's a little bit too serious sounding. I imagine he'll make it have that nice edge. Right. The Nicholas Cage edge. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, the um the character himself. Can you tell us a bit about him? Um so he is a version of Spider Man from a universe where it's basically the nineteen twenties to forties, the it's like Prohibition era. The Great Depression, yeah. Yeah. So the Prohibition era. Um he basically is pretty much the same sort of character. He's He's got powers, um, but he's in all black, wears goggles. He uses very, a gun as well, doesn't he? Uh, sometimes, yeah. I saw a yeah. picture of him earlier with a gun. Um, oh, that's he's, not very he's kind of got a very um, steampunky look to his outfit because of the fact it's goggles and that, but it's not steampunky. Um, it's more kind of like ninja with goggle eyes in a trench coat yeah, type yeah, look, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and you've got all the sort of, you know, Mysterio is like a, a stage wizard um, or uh, illusionist. And then you've got like Kingpin and all the other sort of gangstery bad guys playing 1920s to 40s versions of those gangsters. Um, yeah, it's pretty good. There's a good version of the story of that one where he's watching Mysterio do a show in the Edge of the Spider-Verse comics, which obviously the Edge of the Spider-Verse, uh, no, Into the Spider-Verse movie will probably nod to in some ways. So, right. Yeah, Spider-Verse comic um, eight-part series was really good. I really liked it. So we can see some of these... Uh, so you think we'll, we'll get to see some of the Marvel Noir universe in... Maybe. We, we may get some of it. We may just get him. It depends how deep they want to go. As an introduction to the Spider-Verse for people who haven't read the comics or played any of the games, it might be they just bring in some of the characters and then show a little bit at the end as like a, here you go, well, this is, might be what we do next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sure that they're setting up a, a, a yeah. movie fan try, so at well, least trying to. Kids, kids have seen it in a lot of the cartoons. The modern cartoons have um, shown a lot of the other versions of Spider-Man. Right. Because of the Spider-Verse comics, um, they, I think it was one of the most recent Did, uh, Disney Spider-Man cartoons. They literally had some of the other Spider-Men go off into those cartoons from the comic. So right. it's literally like a carry-on of the story. Okay. But, as watching the cartoon, it still makes sense without having read the comics. So, it's, yeah, they, they're doing proper Spider-Verse linkage. And I found another movie earlier on with uh, with very sim- similar animation. There's a trailer for it. Oh, we'll okay. talk about it at the end. Ooh. So it's I'm sure loads of people are going to come across this film as well. So, um, yeah, just for the minute, though, Deadpool 2. We were just talking about, I should have coupled this together with Avengers Infinity War, really. But oh, that's right. Deadpool 2, the uncut version, right, will be... Unveiled and screened at San Diego Comic Con 2018. Right. Do we know anything else about it, or no. is that all that we know? <laughs> right. Okay. That's all I know. Uh, that's all I want to know. To be fair, 
I'm quite up for seeing an uncut version of this movie. I think like you were saying to me about uncut versions, it's a shame that like I, I buy Blu-rays of all the Marvel films and then the Deadpool ones. I don't buy the X-Men films because I think they're rubbish, but you get the Blu-rays of the Marvel films because I, I quite like to watch them again a few times, you know? To yep. me, it's like watching the X-Men and Spider-Man cartoons when I was a kid. Those films are now that for me. Yeah, you know, that yeah, yeah. that enjoyment. I get to be a kid and sort of delve into this other universe. And uh, yeah, Deadpool's kind of become part of that too. And I bought the Blu-ray for the first one, and I'll buy the Blu-ray for the second one. But if they're doing this uncut version, I really hope they give you the option without having to buy a second Blu-ray. Well, they're doing it with a lot of films. Look, let's face it, they did it with uh, Suicide Squad. They're yeah. doing it with Stephen King's It. Yeah. Um, it would not. Oh, they did it with Logan. It would not yeah. surprise me if they uh, forced you to buy another DVD. But hey, it'll work. People will buy it. Yeah, completists will have both versions. Yeah, I don't you care know. about that. I just want. I want. I uh, just do all the versions on one Blu-ray. Sell it for slightly more, but not massively more. Like I'll pay eighteen quid instead of fifteen quid if you're going to chuck like an extra 15 minutes of footage into the film where it should be rather than as deleted scenes. Two amazing box sets if you want actually every version of every film, uh, every version of a film that's been released. Um, the Watchmen one, the yeah. ultimate edition yeah, yeah. with the super extended version and all the different versions as well. Yeah. And and the documentary on there is fantastic as well. And Blade Runner. Yeah, I had the Blade Runner DVD one which had all it's the like versions. four discs and yeah. it's like, yeah. Mine was two Viewed. double-sided discs. Right, okay. That was the edition I had. So you literally turn the disc over in the player to get a different version. Anyway, that revised version of Blade Runner that they released, what was that, about 10 years ago now, I suppose? Yeah, something anniversary or collector's edition or whatever. The, the one that they it, filmed yeah. extra footage for. Yeah, yeah. The, the documentaries on that are, are so worth watching cool. as well. There are, I think, four of them, and they're, they're like an hour long each. Cool. And there's so much information. It's just really, really worth your time. Right. And the box set's amazing, especially if you can get yourself a still box version. But they go for about 50 quid now. But, wow. uh, yeah, go and seek out both of those box sets. They're really, really worth your time. However, cool. we should move on. Yeah. Um, Vin Diesel's Bloodshot movie. That's going to start filming next month, apparently. Yeah. He's a busy boy. Yeah. Not as busy as The Rock, but... <laughs> no. <laughs> More on him in the news later. Yeah, I Valiant series... Uh, the comics universe I, I don't know I like some of it I just I don't know if they'll manage to do it justice as I have films never come across any of it so oh, there's loads of it it's yeah. really good it's sort of become big again in the comics about two years ago and then suddenly yeah the universe has been bought up by uh, Netflix own part of it and another company own another part of it so we'll see what happens there we go, because we need more comic book movies. Yeah. There you go, fans. There's some on the way for you. Should we talk about something other than comic books? Yeah, go on. Okay. Got to keep everyone happy, haven't we? Let's talk about Sony Pictures in general. Go on. Because they're clever people. Mm, they they always do the, the most, <laughs> you know, if you wanted an industry professional to do something correctly, Sony Pictures would be your man, right? They're, they, they just always do everything right. Like, they, they never show all of a film in the trailers. They never show all the twists and plot points in a trailer, for instance. And they never upload a full movie to YouTube thinking it's a trailer. Are you are you being uh, what's called sarcastic? Maybe facetious? Facetious. Okay. <laughs> I just, just check in my levels. Where, okay. where we're behind these pop shields, I can't see all of your face. So I'm starting to worry that you're being serious there. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, they this week they uploaded an entire movie to YouTube. Wow. Whoops. That's already been copied by people then. It's That's actually, it. yeah, it's all over the place. It's, yeah, it's yeah. available on the internet. But uh, however, this said, what nobody was knew the film? A, It's called Carly the Killer. Right. Not Carly. 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 So that's uh, K H A L I. Carly. Carly the Killer. And it's, um, yeah, quite a, a gruesome, bloodthirsty kind of action, revenge type movie. Cool. And nobody knew anything about it at all. So you could really uh, kind of suggest that perhaps this might have been done on purpose. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. A lot of accidental things like this are done on purpose now, aren't they? Or it's some idiot that's been sacked. Well, intern <laughs> or something. It's just been handed a 
I don't know, a USB drive with two files on it. And one yeah. of them's a, you know, labeled wrong, a three minute movie that's like a few hundred meg. Yeah. And the other one's a 21 gigabyte full movie. And but then it just takes, upload one of those to YouTube as, you know. Like, I've put stuff on YouTube that's only four minutes long and it takes like four hours. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, uploading so a podcast to YouTube takes yeah. forever. So I can't that's imagine what like, a for proper us. film is. Like, a proper film must take forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd notice, wouldn't you? Yeah. You just would notice. Yeah, definitely. Got to be done on purpose. Time left to upload 22 hours. Ah, oh, I'll g- get myself a coffee then. Yeah. Come back an hour later. 47 hey Jeff, hours. Do you want a coffee? What? How has it got longer? <laughs> but yes. Are people su- saying good things about su- it? Surprisingly, no. Um, there are mixed reviews appearing on Rotten Tomatoes and just about everywhere where you can you know, a review. find a review. Yeah. Uh, okay. Go and have a look. It's interesting enough. I personally think this is intentional. I think, yeah, uh, yeah it's, a, it's a rather... Maybe something they didn't put that much money in and they've kind of thought, well, we can try and get some angle off yeah. of it. Yeah. Yeah. Or this is going to make no, no money whatsoever. We've invested some money. What do we do? How do we, yeah, how do we bring this to people's attention? What's the new thing, man? Yeah. YouTube. Do this and then when we release it on Blu-ray, people are going to buy it who like it because we've accidentally let them watch it for free. And then people wandering around Tesco's will go, oh, Carly the Killer, I heard something about this once. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I better buy this. Yeah, yeah. I should buy this. Because it's got the same font as something else. Oh, that's that's the other clever angle. Well, they'll probably do both, won't they? Yeah. <laughs> they'll probably make Put it, it in a box that looks poster. very much like Itchy yeah. the Killer or yeah, something. Yeah, And like, yeah, who knows? <laughs> I like Itchy the Killer. What a movie. Very good film. John Wick 3, Adam. I still haven't finished the second one. Have you not? No, I need to finish the second one. Number three's on the way. Uh, I, I'm up for it. The The first one was really good. What I saw of the second one was really good. I just had to leave and go to work halfway through it. We had a title release this week. I thought they just called one, two, and then this one was going to be called three. Was John Wick chapter... It was John Wick chapter two, wasn't it? Oh, was it? it chapter two? Okay. Mm. Is this chapter three? And this is... The third. John Wick three, Parabellum. Oh, okay. They're actually giving it a full yeah. extra bit. A subtitle, you could say. Mm. But yeah, it comes from the Latin phrase, popular Latin phrase, which I'm, which I'm sure you'll know, Adam. Um, si vis pacem parabellum, which translates as... Put it in a plastic bag with your hip. Take your canvas bag to the supermarket. No, that's... Uh, <laughs> um, if you want peace, prepare for war. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because you say it all the time. Yeah, I've heard that phrase, not in Latin, but I have heard that phrase used before. <laughs> Probably by Donald Trump, but anyway. Uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Do you like Gundam? Gundam. Uh, I like the robots, as in like how Gi- they look. Giant robots are pretty popular yeah, at the moment, I've aren't never, they? never watched it, though. I heard they're possibly yeah, doing something. The, the initial ones, I mean, each to their own. Mm. I've seen some of the early ones and then... Maybe I just I just watched the what the wrong ones, but they they weren't that great. But we've got a live action Gundam movie has been announced from Legendary mm. Entertainment. And if it's done in links with, if it's done in links with Japan, maybe they will um, then be able to cross it over with other American franchises that are quite popular in Japan at the moment, such as uh, Godzilla, um, Kong. Um, what's the other one with the robots? Pacific Power Rim. Rangers. Pacific Rim. Not Power Rangers. Maybe Power Rangers. Whatever. <laughs> like you know, the 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 world the world is their oyster. There's a Robotech movie on the way, isn't there? Oh, so, is there? Yeah. Oh, okay. They fit together very well, but well, they're competing franchises actually. But yeah, yeah. Well, you never know now. Like, uh, I think we're getting to that stage where competing franchises might be willing to actually do stuff together. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Speaking of competing franchises, go on. We we mentioned on the podcast a couple of weeks back that uh, Chucky Child's Play was getting a TV series. A what? Yeah, no. there's a TV series like um, directly linked to the existing Movies. movie franchise, Mental. which is fine. It's yeah, all right. Yeah. You know, if you can't really pull together the the budgets to make straight to DVD movies anymore, then pay out for aim even for TV. more expensive budget on TV. Well. Depends <laughs> if it's done by sci-fi or not. <laughs> I think you're more prob- you're probably more likely to get sort of cult followers watch a TV show perhaps than so you like are the Evil a Dead, movie. Evil, like Evil Dead, Dead TV yeah. show that got cancelled. It did the get cancelled, but the Stan first season did quite well. 
Stan versus something else, which then got cancelled after two series. Basically, most of those cult horror comedies yeah. have been cancelled after two series. None of them do very well because there's t- not enough people really into it to keep it its numbers up. Most of them fail, unfortunately. But as long as the people producing them are sensible enough and they give each season a proper ending, yeah, it doesn't matter because it'll still no. be beloved down well, the yeah, line yeah, and, yeah. The, and exactly. they'll make their yeah. money. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, see what happens. So yes, Chucky Charles Play is getting a TV series. We don't know where and when yet. The trouble is, the guys that made the Stephen King's It reboot, yeah, are rebooting Child's Play. So there's going to be a a separate franchise running in the cinemas at the same time as the TV show is trying to run. How has that happened? It's annoying, isn't it? Like, why why keep remaking, like, horror stuff? There's two ways of looking at this. The TV show is made by the original producers, the original writers. It's got the original voice cast. Yeah. What do you do with a reboot? (sighs) You bring it up to date. What's it going to look like? Just don't bother... Just do something else. Yeah. Do like... Do uh, an original property. Who's the who's <laughs> the bear that we used to have like when we were kids and you put tapes in it? Teddy Rupskin. Do Teddy Rupskin as a, a murderous bear. Werebears. It'd be amazing. Do or Werebears. Werebears the movie. Yeah. That's a great idea. Adult Werebears, because kids don't know what they are now, so you could do it as an adult film for people that had them as kids. That'd be amazing. Boglins the movie. <laughs> oh my god that'd be like garbage pail kids <laughs> <laughs> yeah that didn't go well did it no no I loved it but it it's was one of those awful. films you leave as a memory yeah yeah <laughs> <sighs> anyway yes so that's all happening we'll see how it all turns out I'm I'm quite looking forward to see how they handle a reboot do you know what I, I, I'll give the TV series a go because it's done by the people that made the original I films I like the original films yeah they're, they're very fun. good um but what I'd prefer to reboots of stuff uh, is things like what they tried to do with Tremors, which was make a TV show. And obviously that got cancelled before they'd even finished making, uh, finished putting the pilot together. They made the trailer, hadn't finished editing it, and then cancelled it. And it's like, what? Why? It was all the original people involved. Madness. Like, just oh, something that was good for once. And they, they chose, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to make more sci-fi B-movies of... Dragon versus shark and giant shark versus robot crocodile and so the petition like from that. the fans didn't go very well then. I haven't seen anything about it having made any difference. Unfortunately, I didn't sign it. Got to admit. However, while we're talking about stuff from the eighties, Charles Place from the eighties, isn't it? Or was it the nineties? Uh, anyway, stuff from that sort know. of era. Yeah, Top Gun. You love Top Gun, don't you? Uh, I talked about this before. Didn't I? Yeah. I really, really don't. Do you like Mars Teller? It's the guy that played uh, Mr. Fantastic in the, the, the latest fan forced movie. I've seen him in some things where I thought he's okay. Um, I didn't think he was very good in that. Did you see Pip Slash? I mean, Whiplash? No, not yet. It's very good. Yeah, yeah. Really good. Um, but yeah, he's going to be playing Goose's son in Top Gun 2. Oh, I don't even know what that means. Do you not? Who's Goose? Oh, he's, the, he's the guy that uh, Tom Cruise's character kind of accidentally got killed. Right. Because he's a dick. Because well, Tom Cruise is a dick. Yeah. Yeah, that doesn't... Yeah, I I don't care. <laughs> 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 I really want to try and and show some enthusiasm for the news, but when it involves Top Gun, like, it just really does. It's like most, most of the things that Tom Cruise did at that point in his career, cocktail, Top Gun, don't care about. Sorry. What it does tell us about the film, though, is that it's not going to be completely Tom Cruise-centric. So it sounds as if Miles Teller's coming along, his character uh, being Goose Jr., I suppose. Yeah, Goose yeah. Jr.'s going to come along and be like, hey, man, so it's a bit like you Creed. killed my dad. A bit, bit of a Creed-esque, like, you know, it's the sons of yeah. people. Yeah. Well, so, well, it's not, yeah. It's, yeah. it's more the son coming along and saying, hey, man, you're responsible for yeah. the, my father's death. I'm going to blow you Shoot out of the sky, out, yeah. man. Yeah. Cool. Or something like that. I'd like to see and Tom th- Cruise killed again. <laughs> when was the last time he was killed? That film where he got died over and over and over again for being oh, yeah, an yeah. arsehole. And gradually... Oh, in The, the Mummy. Time died in, in The film, Mummy as well. First time in a film, that time travel one, alert. he ends up becoming quite a decent person by the end of the film. Because he's died so many times, he's gone from an arsehole to quite nice. It's a bloody good film, though. Yeah. Anyway. Mummy's not. No. <laughs> Mummy's awful. <laughs> it's, it's enjoyable awful, though. It's one of those films that you can watch... 
but it's just flipping terrible. I can't even say that I, I found it even slightly enjoying in any way. It's just the constant peril. It's like Lord of the Rings. Just cut... Co- oh, that would be a snooze button then. Yeah, yeah, there we go. We've got a few more things to cover real quickly, so... Go, go, go! I think, yeah, before we move on, I think, I don't know if I said Top Gun 2 is, I think it's called Maverick, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, okay. Which I think is Tom Cruise's character's call sign in the first movie. Don't know. <laughs> Fast and Furious, the spin-off. Shaw and something, are in it? What is it? Hobbs and Shaw. Hobbs and that's Shaw. That's the one. Shaw yeah. and Hobbs. Hobbs and Shaw, whatever it's going to be called. So that's the, uh, is it Jason Statham and The Rock spin-off? Yes. I saw a bit of a trailer the other day, and or this morning. And trailer? Yeah. yeah I don't think they've even started filming it, have they? There was a little trailer of them two in a garage talking together. Maybe it's like a teaser trailer or something. I don't know. Fair enough. Anyway, look. Idris Elba's being cast as the villain of the piece. Because he's, he's a villain. He's a very good villain, actually. What, Jason Statham? No, Idris Elba. Oh, oh okay. Idris Elba is going to be the main villain in it. Has he, yes. has he been in a Fast and Furious before? No. Oh, okay, cool. Interesting. He's a very good villain. I like the sound of that. Um, Alan Taylor, who's the guy that... Well, he's directed some games, Game of Thrones episodes and Thor the... What's the world? Thor the shit world. Th- Dark world. Thor the poo world. Yeah. Thor, Thor visits Elfland, whatever yeah. it's called. Um, yeah, the guy that directed that is directing a Sopranos prequel movie. Okay. Because we need one of those. Apparently. <laughs> John Krasinski. All of a sudden, he's, he's going to be putting... He's, he's getting his acid test, isn't he? He's, he's going to be put through the bloody grinder because he's, he's made a movie that's made a shed load of money and all of a sudden everybody wants a piece of his ass. So, um, yeah, he's involved in a Quiet Place sequel. Cool. Uh, I've not seen the first one yet. No. A- apparently the sequel is going uh, to centre around a different family. So he's not actually perhaps oh, going to okay. be in the film. Cool. So, cool. yeah, he's just involved in production. And he's also working it'd be with interesting Matt Damon. To see, it'd be interesting to see how a different family deal with the same situation compared to a family... Like the family that are in the first one. Yeah. I haven't seen the first one yet, but from what everyone says, it's a very specific family unit. So it'd be interesting to see how a totally different type of family unit might like deal with the same situation. So I'm up for that. I need to go and check it out, actually, because uh, I mentioned this last week. There's a, a really quite a nice high-def version of A Quiet Place available cool. in some dodgy places on the internet, but it doesn't have any France. subtitles. <laughs> France isn't that dodgy. I don't know. It depends where you've been. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, look, John Krasinski is involved with Matt Damon in a in a movie Matt called Damon. Yeah, in a movie called The King of Oil as well. Okay. So yeah, he's getting himself some serious work on his plate. Well done, Scarlett Johansson. Talking about things on a plate, is going to be starring in a true. <laughs> It's going to be starring. Give it time. Give it time. Uh, in a in a true life massage parlor biopic called Rub and Tug. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right, now I understand. <laughs> I thought you were doing like an awful dad segue, <laughs> but it turned out to be a slightly dodgy dad joke. That's actually it quite was, yeah. good. <laughs> See. Yeah. yeah Trust well, me. D- well done for once. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, yeah. Rub and Tug. What a name for a movie. That's going to attack, attract all the wrong attention. Well, it won't be difficult to do a uh, dodgy porno version, will it? No, just call it the same true. thing. <laughs> Tug and rub. Yeah. Anyway, yes, that's happening. Scarlett Johansson in a massage parlor biopic. Right. <sighs> it sounds so right, but at the same time, so wrong. Depends what part she's playing. All the parts. If I, she's just I the, imagine. If she's just anyway. a janitor, then <laughs> what, what most people will be looking forward to is not janitor. what they're going to get. <laughs> She might just be the receptionist. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> oh, dear. Who knows? Right, Men in Black, that spin-off thing with Chris Hemsworth and stuff. Mm. It's uh, going to be- begin filming very, very soon. Uh, oh, no, it- it's already begun filming. Excellent. So that's on its way. I'm up for more Men in Black. I love them. I don't, I don't have a problem with any of those films. Second one's awful, but it's still watchable. Yeah. The third one I've got an issue with. Why? I just don't like it. Oh, I think it's great fun. Ugh. I think um, I've tried watching it twice now. I know. What's his it's name? Mis- disappointing. Um, from uh, like the Concords, C- Cable, Josh Brolin. Yeah, he does a, a perfect impersonation of um, Tommy Lee Jones, 
as a yeah. younger version yeah, of yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, it's true. And uh, and yeah, and guy from Flight of the Concords, Jermaine Clements, is yep. brilliant as a bad guy. I love that bad guy. He'll really. be in the news in a second. Awesome. Anyway, Daisy Williams. She's wrapped up her part on Game of Thrones. Right. You're not interested in that at all, are you? It's the last series, isn't it? It is so the last series. Why is that news then that she's wrapped she's up? She's wrapped filming. Surely that's, that's it. She's done. She can walk away and, and yeah. that's it. Go and take a break for a bit. Um, yeah, she put up a Instagram post of her wearing bloody trainers with a caption that said, Last woman standing, but only just. Right. So hopefully that's not giving away too much of a plot thing, plot point, debris flip. If anyone out there knows how that thing's going to end for certain. I don't think anyone does. Even right, let us know, maybe. I don't know. They're filming like a load of fake... Yeah. They've filmed like a load of fake bits anyway, haven't yeah, they? Yeah, Just absolutely. so no one can... Keep throwing out. people off yeah. the scent. Yeah. True. But that's out next year. Cool. In the spring. Trailers. There's only a few, so that's cool. There's a TV drama starring Chris Pine called I Am The Night, with him as like a, a noir detective type thing. Cool. Set in perhaps the 60s. Oh. Which looks all right. All these are on our Facebook page, by the way. Go and have a look. Go and find them. The last trailer for Skyscraper was released this week. Is that the not follow-on, but follow-on from San Andreas with The Rock in? Yes. Right. He looks very similar in all of his films. Why Why the San Andreas link? Because he's a helicopter pilot and it's a disaster movie. <laughs> Did he lose a leg in San Andreas? No idea, but... I, we can I have never seen it, so I'm assuming he did at the end, and this is like set afterwards, and some of the skyscrapers weren't sorted out properly after the massive earthquake, and he somehow ends up being the person that needs to save everyone again. Okay, fair enough. That's the assumption I'm making. Right. A <laughs> couple of animated things. Yep. So, the Spider-Man animation style that I was talking about earlier on, yeah, that's being used in something else. Gone. White Fang. Do you remember the, the book White, White Fang? Fang. It's about um, it's about a wolf who's taken from the wild. The people that take the cub start to tame it, uh, or, well, domesticate the the, yeah, the dog. Yeah. But then it's stolen by some some guys that organise dog fights, oh. and then the dog escapes and then goes back to living in the wild with a with a bunch of Indians and stuff. It's like a quite an epic sprawling. Is it like a Michael Morpurgo type book? Who? Like a Michael Morpurgo does a lot of animal related children's fiction. He did War Horse. Um, okay. Is it sort of similar sort of thing, like serious, but kids I'd say a bit more like. Or, um, or teenage. Yeah, it's a quite a feel good story. Okay. Like put it in the same uh, the same basket as Black Beauty. Oh, and, okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What's that other one about the, the, the dog and the cat and the. Homeward Bound. Is it Homeward Bound? I don't know if that's what the book's called, but that's what they called the film, wasn't it? So I'm the, assuming it's based on I wanted on the to same say, thing. like, the, the Incredible Down. Journey. Is that? That might be the book version, yeah. Anyway, all yeah, of these things. Yeah. Cool. There's a Netflix animation of White Fang coming very, very soon. There's a trailer for it on our Facebook page. Go and have a look. I think you'd be intrigued. Mm. While we're talking about animation, Matt Groening, we like a bit of Simpsons and Futurama and stuff. Yeah. Have you seen the trailer for his new I have. series? Yes. Called Disenchanted. Yes. Set in a medieval kind of landscape yeah. type thing. Yes. Most of what I've seen in the trailer looks like they ripped it from the Dan Harmon um, Dungeons and Dragons show, Dan Harmon Quest. <laughs> Is that a comedy thing? It's a comedy show which Dan Harmon does with some mates where they literally play Dungeons and Dragons on stage in front of a live audience. Um, and then animate it afterwards while they're performing. So it jumps between animated and them sat on stage, and it's that hilarious. That sounds interesting. And yeah. What's that called? Harmon Quest. Harmon Quest. Yeah, it's okay. really, really good. Go and have a look at this trailer for Disenchanted, ladies and gents. This is also on uh, Netflix. Netflix. Netflix have, uh, have ordered 20 episodes of this of this show. Uh, the first 10 will be available on the 10th of August, so not very far away at all. Cool. And then, all the rest of them about, like, uh, paranormally type stuff. I'll leave a certain specific one about connected to, to Jermaine Clement until the end. So, um, Cold Skin. Have you seen a trailer for this, no. by any chance? This looks like an interesting movie. So, Lighthouse Keepers. Yeah. But kind of, I'm going to say, they've got guns, but, like, very, very old guns. So, perhaps Victorian kind of times. Right, okay. So, the possibly like relief lighthouse workers 
going yeah. off to lighthouse to work, cleaners or just going off to work in a in, in a lighthouse because somebody's gone missing. Oh, and at night beasties come out of the sea. Have you played um, The Witcher? Well, I haven't, but Wh- I know the mythology it's based on. So Witcher Three, there are kind of like Cthulhu esque. Water, like sea river, demons. river creatures, yeah. things that live by the river, and they're, they're blue, and they come after you. And they're quite. Some of them, when they're underwater, they're quite tough. These creatures look just like those. Oh, okay. And uh, yes, so one of the the lighthouse keepers got like one that he keeps as a kind of a pet, a slave type thing. Oh. And then there's armies of them that come out at night sometimes. That actually sounds pretty good. Uh, it looks pretty damn cool. We know somebody else very well that's uh, that's got a, a movie being produced in Hollywood. Yes. All about lighthouses mm. with uh, Gerard Butler as the star. Yes, it is, isn't it? Yeah. 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 That What's the movie called? It's going to be called... Oh, Keepers. Yes. Yeah, Joe Bone's story. We should catch up with him, see how that's coming yeah, along. Yeah. Maybe we can get him on the show. We've been saying that for a while. Anyway, Cold Skin... Is the name of that? that uh, Sounds good. That movie. Go and have a look at that. Uh, UFO. Did you see this trailer by any chance? No. So Gillian Anderson, because she's going to be in a UFO movie. <laughs> Time to happen. Exactly. Looks pretty interesting. So a group of people at an airport see a UFO, and then like the FBI turn up and start shutting everything down, and like nobody's allowed to talk about it. Oh. Anybody that tries to put stuff out on the internet and stuff. Like, it's like a conspiracy theory yeah. movie, man. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, a movie about that kind of thing. Nice. Very Gillian Anderson, but it right. actually looks pretty good. Go and have a look at the trailer. And last but certainly not least, you've been waiting on a What We Do in the Shadows TV series for a little while, Adam. I have, yeah. You'll be happy to know, or you might be happy to know, you're, you're going to get two of them, actually. What? You're actually going to end up getting two. An American one. Right. And this one that there's a trailer for. What? I don't. What do you mean? <laughs> so, the rights for a TV show called What We Do in the Shadows has been purchased by an American company. Yeah. And they're making a TV show based on the movie. So, it'll, so it will follow the lives of vampires living in a flat together. But right, okay. set in America. Okay, right. so it could be a different set of vampires from the movie. It but will be, yeah, yeah. Same sort of thing, yeah. yeah. A trailer was released this week for the show Wellington Paranormal, which oh, is following okay. the cops around yeah, yeah. from the original show, In dealing with other stuff. Cool. So, Very cool. So that's out there. It's, it's quite difficult to find because um, it's only being released on like New Zealand television yeah, to start yeah. with. So you can, I don't think you're going to find they'll get, an they'll official have, release they'll, they'll end here. up being shown on the BBC over here if it's on New Zealand TV. Might be in two years' time. I uh, don't know. They're pretty quick with New Zealand shows that are popular. They normally get them within a year. So we, we might be lucky enough to get it within a year. We'll have to wait and the see. The great thing about this, though, is uh, if you've been waiting for it or waiting for it for a while, it's, it's been released... Literally within the next two weeks. Amazing. So, yeah. Go and find it. Cool. And pay for it where you can. <laughs> Definitely. I guess it's support, something worth you know. paying for, so Absolutely. I will pay for it. Right. And that's about it for trailers. That's about it for the show then, isn't it? Yes. Amazing. Should we wrap it up? Yeah. So, if you'd like to find anything that we do outside of the podcast, folks, please go and find our Facebook page, Snoo with the Crew. You can find links to our stuff there. Honourable mention for Libsyn and Stitcher. It's them that's producing the uh, what we do in the Shadows TV shows, isn't it? Yeah, both of them. Hopefully they'll do a good job on both. Libsyn always gets my vote. <laughs> Stitch can fuck off. Anyway, um, if you'd like to write into the show about anything whatsoever, if you've got comments, stuff you'd like us to review, anything a- at any all. Any ideas for a special one-off show once in a blue moon? This is true. Snoo with the crew at gmail.com, Facebook us, tweet at us, anything you like at us. YouTube comments. All the stuff at us. With a thumbs up, please. Oh, yes, thumbs up, please. That'd be great, rather than not thumbs down. Thumb down for one comment. It's amazing. Ladies and gents, thank you very much for listening. We'll catch you next time. Say bye, Adam. See you later. See you later. Say bye.